So, I read part one of Chainsaw Man, and... What's up everyone, Full Animix here. Chainsaw Man has been a series in my mind for the past couple of months. I bought all 11 volumes at the start of last year and read the first four, but I didn't read the rest until now. Now I have like three more because I am obsessed. But it was not the first time consuming Chainsaw Man. A little while ago, maybe like five, four years ago, a friend of mine actually recommended me Chainsaw Man, which was a manga circulating and gaining popularity. And I immediately said, let me guess, he's a man with chainsaws. And he said no. And honestly, I wasn't really on board with reading the manga as I've never really read manga before then. And I was strictly an anime watcher as it was more accessible in my eyes, even though I could have just Googled it. So I decided to read the first volume of Chainsaw Man and it was okay. Looking back then, I was probably just getting back into anime. I had never watched One Piece. I thought Dragon Ball was the greatest piece of cinema to ever hit my eyes. And I was probably watching High School DXD for the fifth time. A year goes by and suddenly the Chainsaw Man anime teaser dropped and I got excited because I was like, huh. I know everything that's gonna happen. But I wanted to know more than I initially did as I've only read the first volume at that point. So, I forgot to read the rest of it. The Chainsaw Man anime was an event. Everyone was talking about it. Everyone was watching it and it flopped, insert CSMBD meme. But I do think Chainsaw Man was one of the best shows that came out in 2022 and it was a contender for anime of the year. Too bad it came out in fall 2022 so it was technically considered of last year's anime awards and we all know how that went. <laughs> so let me give you a bit of a reminder of what this show is about. Chainsaw Man focuses on Denji, a 16 year old in financial troubles because his dad left for milk and Oh. Denji is left with his demon dog named Pochta, and together they fight devils in order to pay off his debt. He's then killed, but Pochta says, yeah nah, and gives Denji his hard becoming devil man cry. Oh wait. Oh no, sorry, it's Chainsaw Man. Yep. Easy mistake. Makuma discovers him and adopts him. For real, like, it's it's kind of weird. You can't tell me that this looks normal. Along the way, we are introduced to more characters, which are likable in their own special way. God damn it. And that's sort of where the show ends. They adapt four volumes to make a 12 episode season, and I wanted more. So I read all the volumes that were available. Reading manga isn't something I do a lot. I really only read it if I like the series that much that I want to know more about it. Or the ending gets ruined and I decide to read it anyways because I hate myself. Not mentioning any certain particular shows. Reading Chainsaw Man was a different experience than reading other manga. Kind of. Don't take this the wrong way, but I really like how simple this manga is at the beginning. The plot progresses at a good pace, we get great world building, but not too much to get overloaded with information, and we learn a lot about what type of person Denji is. A dumbass. But for real, Denji as a character is something that I was conflicted about at the start of this because he seemed like a boring protagonist with no real depth. He also seemed too goofy at some points, but as more as I read, a switch kind of flicked in the back of my head and I realized Denji is probably one of the most relatable characters in anime. And it's not because, haha, <laughs> booba, <laughs> but the amount of emotional trauma, manipulation, and just straight up depressing shit that happens to him. Honestly, it could be its own video, but I'm gonna be trying quick and summarize it. There's a lot of different things that happen to Denji that could make Gordon Ramsay go into a psychotic meltdown. The themes of aspirations and loneliness contrast one another as when someone achieves something, bad things tend to happen resulting in death, which seems to happen a lot with Denji all the time. Reze is a pretty easy example of this. The seemingly sweet girl introduces herself to Denji and is immediately head over heels for him and straight up says I like you ooh woo and becomes conflicting as Denji really likes Makima but Reze just comes out of nowhere confessing to him and is stuck between. He decides to spend more time with Reze thinking that his aspirations might finally be coming ahead. 
until. Reze's portrayal is something that sticks with Denji, losing someone that he actually cared about but wanted to kill him, resulting in him being left with a void that couldn't be filled. It's not until later that he realized that he has his close friends that can fill that void with power and Aki, but even that is short-lived. Power's relationship to Denji improves, creating a more intimate relationship while still being strictly platonic with each other, and becomes quite reliant on him as she still has PTSD from going to hell, where Aki develops an attachment towards the two people he thought he would never become friends with. After almost dying to the darkness devil, Aki now treats Denji and Power like family, and asks Makima to take them off the task force because he doesn't want to lose them as he's already lost so much. But with a twist that I unfortunately knew about, it was revealed that Makima has been the control devil the entire time. From the moment Makima met Denji, she has manipulated him into doing her bidding, caused the downfall of all of his friends, resulting in Makima defeating the gun devil and forcing it into Aki's body. The fight that ensues is one of the best sequences in the manga. The fight between Chainsaw Man and the gun fiend is a contrast with Denji and Aki having a snowball fight. A snowball fight that he never had with his younger brother, symbolizing that he sees Denji as a brother. And as if it wasn't emotional enough, not even three Three chapters later, bang. Makuma kills Power, and now I am depressed. Power was a character that I didn't really like at the start, but started to grow fondly of as I read on. She's a different type of female lead than other shows that I watch, where they all fall under a certain caricature. At the start of the manga, Power is a selfish bitch and tricks Denji into a trap laid by the Bat Fiend. But after Denji saves her, her opinion changes about him. She's not all head over heels for him, but respects him in a realistic manner. Her personality stays consistent throughout the whole manga, but grows into a person that transcends her identity as a <clears throat> pick me girl. A lot of people see her as a loud attention seeking girl, but that's just who she is. When Power is killed by Makima, her death felt sad, but not as emotional as Aki's. And I get that it comes out of nowhere, but it didn't really feel like the right send off for her. But luckily Power comes back in probably one of the coolest and power like ways possible. Unfortunately, she dies again, but in a more fitting way that makes her send off a hundred times better. Makima is a character that is wonderfully crafted and I love how twisted she is. Her character demeanor alone makes her one of the most terrifying antagonists that I've seen in the show. Throughout the whole manga, it always looks like she has that look in her eyes. A person who is confident in their capabilities and knows how to get on top. The slow cracks feeding information telling us to doubt this character's intentions if you already weren't suspicious, and then the reveal that Makima is listening. She's a complicated character that a lot of the fans disagree on, and there's no definitive right answer about her. Her relationship with Denji is one that fans depict as a double-edged sword, a seemingly caring person yet has ulterior motives. Her dream is to kill every devil so that no one will fear them anymore but kills millions to get her way. She wants a perfect world but can't overcome the hypocrisy of her own statement. I also kind of like the hypnotic snail nod at the opening of the anime, how it directly corresponds with Makama. Uh, it's, it's called this. I'm not going to pronounce that, <laughs> but it's basically a parasite that takes over a snail in order to spread up the food chain, or you could say it controls them. It's been X amount of time. I think it's time to talk about Tatsuki Fujimoto's art direction. Uh, it was not something I liked straight away. <laughs> now, I'm not a big art guy, and I couldn't care whether or not a show looked good, unless it was X-Arm. What the fuck was that? My initial reaction from reading Chainsaw Man was, wow, these characters look like shit. <laughs> It took me a while before I got used to Fujimoto's art choice for the characters, as I didn't really appreciate the line work that he was doing during my first read through of volume one. His fluid line work makes the characters have a different level of depth, and the way it polarizes from the background's detailed environment makes you more immersed in the world. I think people get put off by Fujimoto's art style because they can't look past the character designs, where there is so much more to appreciate, like the backgrounds. And I think this is where Fujimoto excels at. Contrasting from the characters designs, the backgrounds have realistic detail to them, like you can see in this panel, I want this tattooed on me. Each panel seems to have a cinematic flair to them, like there was a purpose behind it. Certain panels feel uneasy because of the framework, and other panels encapsulate the character's emotions by just their faces. No overly exploratory of like, how did they find out about my secret, but subtle expressions that feel authentic. 
Action and manga is something that I've always been a bit iffy about, mainly because I've only read one other manga that was a shonen, but that's for a different video. But I was very surprised by how much I liked the fights. Though I do think the anime does a better job, but that's just mainly due to fluidity and it just looks more appealing in my eyes. But that's not to say the manga isn't as suspenseful as the anime. Each fight has a level of buildup that makes the fight even more impactful than the one before it. The Reize fight in particular stands out because of the buildup with her relationship with Denji. But some of the fights are great even without build up, like when the whole group is sent to hell and gets absolutely fucking raw dogged by the darkness devil. Paired with Fujimoto's artistic flair and compelling characters, you have one of the most intriguing manga ever created. Part 1 is a great story, but at the same time, it still feels like only the beginning. I am almost 100 chapters and 11 volumes, and it still feels like a fever dream that I want to experience more of. Currently, I have not started part 2, but that is sure to change in the future as I'm slowly getting more of the manga, and it has only made me want more of this dark and interesting world. And yeah, thank you guys for watching this video, leave a like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later.